we are at the Edible Book Contest in Florence, Massachusetts. Every year, around April 1st, we celebrate Brillat Savarin's birthday. They have an edible book contest to celebrate the great book of Brillat's. And we're going to go inside and see the contest and see who wins. The book the library in Havity sometimes does it. The library in Havity does it too. So what we'd like to do is go around, I know it's a little awkward with everybody standing around, but go around starting over there and the judges will give their award. I have to get the buttons out and um, and have the people that made the uh, edible book go and talk about it. And so I'll project the book up on the screen so everybody can see it. And we'll start with... Yes, this case yes, the yeah, picture. Yeah. Hello, I'm, yeah, I'm Justine. Uh, I'm Nate. And we decided to go for something healthy this year and do an ABC book. So we made a A out of apples on a background of almonds, a B out of bananas on a background of blueberries, and a C out of carrots with cottage cheese. <laughs> so after you have lots of cake, uh, enjoy this. <laughs> and it, it was very effective because that is our best raw entry. <laughs> oh me? Yeah. Well, well me? Well, I made your book. I made because of Win Dixie. The thing I'm most excited about is I managed to make my I managed to convince my mom for me to um ha put in a green marshmallow peep to be a bird. Do you want to see what the scene is, Ben? The scene is the manager is me on Win Dixie's on top of the manager. Awesome. So Win Dixie is the dog. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Name after the grocery stores in. who like their butter side up and the zooks who like their butter side down and there's a war to see which side is better and the final weapon they use is the big Betsy uh, the big boy Boomeru which is kind of like the nuclear bomb in their time and yeah and we decided that this was the best cake to have in the morning. You could have your toast yeah. either way. <laughs> My name's Meg, and I did um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And there's more factory side, and then the 
split uh, waterfall and river. And have little square candies looking around. <laughs> Uh, we decided, the judges, to award this beautiful uh, arrangement uh, the best use of candy contracting. <laughs> mortar yeah, there's a mortar too. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> I decided to do a book about color theory um, and I wanted, we attended a, a, a workshop at the Forbes Library where these past participants gave us some great tips and ideas and things like that and um, one of the things that I thought about was I wanted, I wanted to really be able to eat everything. Um, you know, like there are things that you could use that are edible, but I really, like I really want to be able to eat it. So that's what started this. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't really find anything healthy for the blue. <laughs> so the blue is a little candy oriented. But yeah. So. Well, we really appreciate. You could have done. You could have done blueberries. You could have done blueberries. Best use of mixed media. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I did another entry that's the Origami Yoda series, and I experimented with a lot of different types of flat materials, and some of them ended up not working out. Um, like this one was, uh, was this was actually a, a the Abba the puppet that was a reject made from uh, sesame folded stuff, and um, but I, I you know I, I, I it's hard for me to throw anything away, so I started. I just kept stuff in a glob, and it started to look like a, uh, like a collage. So um, then I went to the library and tried to find a collage book, and I found one called Creative Collage with Leftovers. <laughs> and, uh, you can just make that book up. <laughs> Limited edition. And, uh, yeah, see, the, the, I thought that the, um, the photo was pretty close to what I actually had. <laughs> Why it's our best replica of an artistic book. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, they're together. Yeah. Uh, the next one right here. Oh, okay. The crocodile people? Yep. Yeah. That's us. What's your name? Uh, uh, so, this is Philip and this is Maya, and we decided um, to make a cake about the enormous crocodile. And he's swimming in the murky river with this um, not so big one, is his name. Not so big one crocodile. And then we had to add some other um, figures um, because we are working on the sequel to the book. So. Yeah. We thought this was the best protected cake. Oh. Because there is some crocodile and also there's a very good note attached to the front of the table that is a warning about please don't eat. <laughs> Hi, my, um, my, my name is Misael, this is Matt. Chris and Michael, um, my idea was to do Frog and Toad. It was one of my favorite books as a child. Um, the cake is basically made of just yellow, uh, yellow cake mix. We used fondant to make the sidewalk and the toad and the frog and the bird and the snake. And also the cover for, for, for the cave, which consists of layers from another cake that we made aside and we basically just carved it and shaped it into the form of a cave. And then we used these little candy rock pebbles um, as uh, rocks and pebbles. <laughs> we used dill as grass around the... Uh, around the edge here and uh, trees and bushes consist of uh, par parsley and then the bird's nest is uh, made of pretzels and put together with uh, frosting, dyed, dyed frosting and then, uh, and then the light green color here is all dyed frosting and uh, it's from one of my fa favorite scenes of, in, Fro in Frog and Toad uh, 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 snakes and dragons, but I, I mean I use a snake and a bird though, because it's kind of hard to make a dragon. <laughs> and um, that's, that's, that's that. Um,
without this, we give the award the most illustrative of the original of the in inspiring story. Uh, this year, I did uh, the Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck, and I. When I was doing a little bit of research about it, I got this great picture of Henry Fonda, who was in the movie, and I was just really struck by just how black and white it was, and that it was going to be perfect for a mosaic. Unfortunately, I was the person making the mosaic, and I did it with raisins. I started out with grapes. The grapes were way too big, and I made like a smiley face. It looked absolutely horrible. I was going to make it frown because it was the grapes were brown. So raisins turned out to be the best way to go, except you could sit there for hours trying to get each little perfect thing, maybe cut the raisin in half and move it. And so it's, I abandoned it. I didn't finish it, but uh, this is the Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. And uh, I, just, I just decided that uh, this was an incredible work. You should look at it if you miss it for, you, uh, for now. But um, actually, the portrait of Henry Fonda, I saw a little bit of Jane Fonda in here. <laughs> to make very specific shapes and put them on top of it. Well, we thought this was an incredible work that really showed emotion, actually. It, you, everybody should take a look at this dragon because we thought it looked like just a very happy dragon, the way it just was doing what it does best, breathing fire <laughs> and, you know, mining and having havoc. So we, <laughs> havoc, exactly. So we called this the, uh, this award is the Happiest Most Edible Dragon Award. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, I know. Well, I know it's kind of weird because we got the wrong book here. It was the fourth. Um, that was only my dad had um, at the minute, so we just um, put it up. Um, and um, well, when me and my mom were making it this morning. Um, so we, were, so we were trying to like make the lines, except it kept hardening, which was really annoying. So it took like two hours to make. So you can't annoying. really see the drawing. Yeah. Do you want to tell them so who we? Annoying. Yeah. Whatever. Do you want to tell them where we just came from and who we just met? Um, we just came from the Eric Carl Museum. We were like meeting um, Jeff Kinney. So we just, Jeff Kinney, was, he's over at the Eric Carl Museum today, and we just were over there, so we just rushed over here. <laughs> we just got here. So it was really exciting. It was great to hear from one of her favorite authors and then be able to have a picture. Well, we thought that this was, uh, we looked through the book, even though it might not be the exact one, and saw that the illustrations that you did on the cake were incredibly Accurate to the illustrations of the book. So we awarded you the most accurate. Oh. And in that, they had to play chess in order to find the Sorcerer's Stone. So I made a chocolate chess set. And I actually found out the actual positions from the book, and then oh, wow. the broken pieces <laughs> are the wrong, are the pieces that got taken away. So we decided that um, you should get the most intricate detail award. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided to um, just illustrate the title rather than the plot, and it's, yeah, it's hotel. hotel at two corners of Bitter and Sweet. We, um, we use candy bricks to make the road, and we have bitter things over here, cocoa beans, and horseradish, and sweet things, marshmallows, and candy. Horseradish, beware. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might not yeah, want to eat that one. Um, 
on the sweet side. And then for the hotel, it's a piece of like pumpkin bread covered in royal icing. Pumpkin bread. And <laughs> yes, uh, graham cracker roof. And for the signs, we melted down chocolate to stick it all together and then put it in the freezer to dry. And it's all in a base of cookie dough. So you might not actually want to eat it because <laughs> We know it tastes disgusting. Royal icing is really bad. <laughs> well, we, uh, I mean, and from the looks of it, we all thought that that was so much better than what MapQuest or Google Maps could do and give us. <laughs> so we awarded it the best edible map. <laughs> I chose to do uh, the Metamorphosis by Kafka, um, which is uh, a sad story about a man who wakes up one day and he's transformed into a cockroach. And the yeah, the climax kind of has a scene with apples, and um, so I kind of went with a baking transformation from apples into an apple tart. Um, so playing off of the title of the book while picking up on the the apples. Uh, but I'll let you read it to find out what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I toasted some almonds and put them on top to try and replicate some. I thought they were a little buggy. <laughs> Well, in spite of the cockroach reference, uh, <laughs> the Indo Warrior uh, entry, the most appetizing. <laughs> Stregonona's We did the pasta, like Stregonona, and we did her pasta pot, which is a magical pasta pot that, like, makes pot, like, endless pasta. Um, and we made a cake, and then we made a lot of fondant and put it on the top for pasta. And we iced it. Well, <laughs> no, it's not pasta. Um, I think there's some waffles in there. <laughs> Leftover breakfast. If we were meaner judges on a TV show, we would have mentioned the mop at this point, but we're not. So actually, we just we came up with the very simple award. It's, we, we thought this was the most awesome cake. <laughs> I'm Sunrise, and I did um, Monster High, Back and Deader Than Ever. Um, I did the last scene where they are opening the school, and it's a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, through all the books, this is the most touching scene for me. Um, and so, yeah, I made their clothing out of marzipan, and the school is just covered in candy and stuff. Um, yeah, and some of it's made out of Mars pan, and the rope is bubble gum. So, yeah. Well, we thought it was there was so much detail, <laughs> and a lot, um, a lot of action, and kind of capturing. We thought the best edible illustration of a typical day in high school. <laughs> And I did the latest Moosewood cookbook. I'm one of those people who reads cookbooks like they're novels, so they're just a book to me. I went with a literal translation of a moose family in the woods. I've got gingerbread moose and sugar cookie trees and pretzels for the wood. They also do a great job of holding up the trees. If you look at it from the back, there's little pretzels holding up the trees. Some candy rocks, little coconut grass, um, what else? On, on top of a chocolate cake. And I brought extra cookies since I didn't want to have them at home, so those are free for the taking, too. <laughs> well, uh, I know that when I saw this uh, incredible display, I, it reminded me of one of my favorite quotes from Oscar Wilde, who said, the only thing I can't resist is temptation. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave this the award the most tempting design to seduce. Oh. <laughs> I'm Erica, and I chose to do 1984, and I thought it would be fun just to do a play on the words, and so I made 19 penny fours. <laughs> In terms 
the whole concept of the day and the edible book and capturing the book's concept, which is so hard to do with an edible piece and it's kind of a limited medium. But so we thought, given all of this, we thought very hard, put our heads together, and decided this was just the winner of the edible book so fantastic. Get a big brother in there and the title. And so well done. Usually, usually I start out with a concept of something that would be fun to make and then find a book for it. But I had actually read these books and it seemed like a perfect thing since I do origami. Um, the trick was trying to find flat construction material that would that would, would also maintain a crease and be foldable. And went through a lot of different different materials. And some of the rejects are in the other the other one. Um, this was a, a circular um, bread, uh, sort of like a roll-up bread, spinach flavored. And the um, dark paper is laminated. Um, sugar sheet that was black with with um, uh, uh, rice paper behind it that, to, get, to make it, give it a little more structure. Um, and this is a soy wrap. And this is the most amazing sheet of banana uh, slices that, um, <laughs> that that was the only, it was a trans market, the only ingredient was bananas. Everything else had you know, chemicals up up everywhere. Um, and the, the banana was actually done by origami expert Michael over here. And he, he made the three-dimensional lips and anything else you want to say? We chose this one as a category winner. This is the best edible origami. <laughs> Instructions in the back of the book on how to make them. Um, sometimes we followed them. Sometimes they were too complicated, and so this we made simpler versions of them. I'm not artistic like he is, so I can't make things that are hard to make. So I always have to think of something that's simple to make, and then try to find some book that go with it. So I had this cookie cutter, and I put some legs on it. And I found, I searched the library catalog to look for bunnies and rabbits <laughs> and came up with two and they seemed to go together, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> I heard what you said about uh, constructing something. Uh, we did think you had a very good handle on conceptualization. So we gave you the best edible recontextualization. Ours, <laughs> but it's my dad's and her husband's, and but he couldn't make it today, and he chose swimming to Antarctica. So he really struggled trying to figure out how to make the icebergs and make it look icy. And so he finally decided on white chocolate on top of the rice krispie treats. Oh. So, yeah. Well, we thought this was an incredible rendition of what's actually happening on the title. And the, in the photo, as you can yeah. see, there she is swimming, <laughs> and there, in the top right, is she swimming? So, and her hair, and the, and the freestyle of the fondant. So we gave this uh, best conceptual. Thank you on the side, so I'm looking. Yes. Okay. This is the tale of Despero, and um, my friend Hannah helped me um, making Riscoro and um, most of the background, and my mom did most of the outlining for the cake, and. Yeah. You want to see what the theme is, Emma? What's the book about? Um, the book's about a mouse um, who um, breaks one of the mouse laws, and he lives in the castle, and he goes to the dungeon, and he has red thread around his neck. I don't remember that. Oh, it's That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> We 
we had a lot of complicated thoughts about this, but most of it came down to most chocolatey. <laughs> I did my favorite comic book, The Walking Dead, and I made a zombie coming out of the grave, which is actually crushed up Oreos, and I made the head out of chocolate and white cake, and I made the hand out of Rice Krispie treats, and this actually took me about three days to make because, yes, I am a perfectionist, but then I realized that it's a zombie, so it doesn't really have to be perfect, so this is it. Well, when I first came in today, this is one of the first ones I saw, and I got completely freaked out. <laughs> so we gave him the award, most scared. <laughs> and we did The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and we were just talking last week, throwing out book ideas, and this was a popular idea with the kids. Um, so we decided to go with it, and we frequent uh, Sweeties downtown, so we figured we'd try to use as many treats as we could. So we used, um, they make these yellow bricks for the yellow brick road. We made the, um, the witch that the house lands on, we made her stockings out of Smarties, and her feet, her golden, or her uh, ruby slippers are gummy bears. And we have the house made out of gingerbread cookies. And the top is jelly beans. The top is jelly beans. Oh, we get the Emerald City. And we made the Emerald City. So we have the beginning of the story, kind of the beginning, leading to the end. Yeah. Oh. You did a great job in that witch, because that was the best one to our mind. Sure, all three of us just could not not look at her. So we thought we'd give you the most or the best edible dead witch. <laughs> He came up with the, uh, the book title, Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel, and the concept of excavating the cake. <laughs> he also was the grass man. But uh, most of the cake was assembled. We did more purchasing than baking, <laughs> I wish I could say. So it's Whole Foods cake with chocolate, you know, white, white frosting and chocolate cake for the dirt, and dyed coconut, allergy alert. Um, <clears throat> licorice for the, the arm of the steam shovel and uh, fruit roll-up surrounding banana bread from the co-op. Corrugated licorice. This seems, this seems to us, um, we're almost done. This seems to be a uh, really commentary on the events that are about to happen after this, whereupon <laughs> we all uh, scoop away the cakes as fast as we can so we give it the most the, most meta edible cake award. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So this was done by my daughter. By my daughter and I, but she's too old now to come in here. She's a teenager. Um, <laughs> this is her concept. Quiet for one more cake, please. Um, and we weren't sure if we were going to make it in time because my son had three basketball games today, yesterday and today. But we did. We got it together. And we've been working on this um, for about a year, trying to collect as many peeps as we could. <laughs> <laughs> Different flavors. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a conceptual e Easter Island. Right, yeah. exactly. And that's why we thought if you were going to imagine what Easter Island looked like, Without having the reference there, what exactly is there, this is what the three judges thought it would look like. So, <laughs> most imaginative. Oh!